Microsoft is betting on another hot sector in the tech industry, nuclear fusion. Last week, the company announced it signed a purchase agreement with nuclear fusion startup Helion Energy, and it will buy electricity from Helion after 2028. Now, the reasons we call this a bet is because nuclear fusion actually doesn't work yet. Unlike nuclear fission, which makes energy by splitting atoms, this process, like the sun, collides them. It's very powerful, but also very difficult. And so far, no company has been able to produce electricity from it. Now, nuclear fusion companies have raised more than $5 billion from big name investors like Bill Gates and Sam Altman. Altman is, in fact, an investor in Helion. But this is the first time a purchase agreement has been signed. The implication, therefore, is that Microsoft believes nuclear fusion is right around the corner. So, Scott, Microsoft has long had this reputation as a sort of sluggish, almost outdated competitor to companies like Apple and Google and Meta. But this year they've made headlines in AI uh, and now they're making headlines in nuclear fusion. Is this the year that Microsoft finally shrugs off that reputation? Oh, I think they shrugged it off a while ago. I think mm-hmm. Sachin Adela is the CEO of the decade. Mm-hmm. And I mean, uh, I mean, you're talking about you're talking about the difference between, you know, what's his face, Tom Brady, or Tom Giselli's ex husband and Troy Aikman, who went to UCLA, three Super Bowl rings, by the way. <laughs> these are these both these CEOs are amazing, but I think you'd have to pick Sacha just because of the Renaissance, Microsoft. And Apple trade off as the most valuable companies in the world. And occasionally yep. Saudi Aramco slips in there. But mm-hmm. I would argue that they're working with a, a pretty good hand when you sit on the Atlantic Ocean of oil. But anyways, the what he's done here is just nothing it's just nothing short of remarkable. They miss or his predecessors missed mobile. They miss social. They miss search. Mm-hmm. And yet it's uh, the second or the most valuable company in the world, depending on the day you look at it. They have established the ultimate rundle in the form of Microsoft Office. They have a recurring revenue relationship with probably 97% of companies in the world that are over $10 million in revenue. And they continue to innovate. What's even more remarkable is just culturally, they've gone from Anakin Skywalker to Darth Vader to Anakin again. They're now seeing... In the 90s, when I was coming up professional age, Microsoft was seen as the worst partner in the world, that they just abused their partners and they were terrible people to do uh, business with. And now they're seen as great partners. I think this nuclear fusion thing is probably the influence of Bill Gates, who has been a Mm -hmm. real proponent, and I'm a huge fan of nuclear energy. Um, I think that it's ridiculous to to not have a sober conversation around the wonders and power and productivity of nuclear power in an age when we're really trying to get serious about climate change. Mm -hmm. And he's a big fan of it, knows a lot about it, is actually a big investor in one of the new guys in nuclear energy. So Mm -hmm. I would bet that he sat down with Satya and said, this is the future. Fusion is super interesting. My senses are still a long way to go, but recreating the sun in terms of energy is pretty pretty exciting. And then Sam Altman, you know, I've said this before. Sam Altman will be Time's Person of the Year because the richest person in tech, or the person who gains the most or creates the most shareholder value in tech, has a one in three chance of being Time's Person of the Year because of our idolatry of innovators. But mm-hmm. w- what Sacha has done here, and this corporate investment in OpenAI, and just the pivot and the cultural change—it's just nothing short of remarkable. Yeah, I mean, you mentioned that you think Bill Gates had a part to play here. Do you think it's possible that Altman did as well? I mean, he's the CEO and the founder of OpenAI, who Microsoft invested in. He's the majority owner of Helion. He invested $375 million. That's his biggest holding that he has. Uh, do you think it's possible that he sort of influenced this decision? Uh, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't be surprised if on Sunday afternoon, Satya calls up Sam and says, Sam, what are you doing, buddy? Mm-hmm. And Sam goes, nothing, uh, Sa- Sati. What, what are you doing? And he says, why don't you come over here and run, rub lotion? Why don't you come over here and rub La Roche Posay over the small on my back and we'll sit out and smoke <laughs> cigarettes and eat ice cream? I bet these guys are thick as thieves. <laughs> I bet they are such good friends mentoring each other. You know, I mean, they are giving each other ma- mani petties. These guys are tight. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, uh, yes, I think that I think that Sam and Sacha are, uh, you know, figuring out how to redraw the maps of the world. Mm hmm. And if you just look at the the terms of this agreement, this isn't actually an investment. This is just 
we agree to buy your power. Um, there are financial penalties if Helion doesn't deliver the power by 2028. Um, it's not really clear what skin Microsoft has in this game, though. It's possible that maybe they've agreed to some sort of predetermined price per megawatt hour, whatever it is. Um, have you ever seen a, a contract like this in tech? And do you have any insight into what it might actually look like? I, I don't know the specifics of the contract, but it strikes me that Microsoft, uh, Satya is very shareholder driven and Microsoft or Satya is as good as anyone, maybe with the exception of Bob Iger, of saying, all right, we have distribution. Also, Richard Branson is really good at this. Richard Branson never found a deal that he wanted to put his own money into. He always mm. said, do you want my promotional capabilities? Do you want my brand? Uh, but he never put his own money into these deals. And uh, also, Disney was great at getting investors. They had these LLC vehicles back in the 80s and 90s where they get someone to put up $100,000 so they could invent, you know, they could uh, say they owned part of ET or something and uh, and they shitty returns, but incredibly low uh, cost of capital. My, my mm -hmm. sense is a deal like this, when you're Microsoft and you have this kind of distribution, you can offer this sort of credibility. Anything that Satya signs up for, anything that has a press release, a joint press release with the Microsoft logo on it, that that business is taken very seriously. So they can extract, you know, several kilos of flesh, if you will, in terms of terms. And probably part of those terms are they will say to, I bet he turns to his CFO and says, this is all upside for us because we're not putting much capital to work. Yeah. And then just finally on, on nuclear fusion. So one theoretical physicist from UChicago said, Quote, this is the most audacious thing I've ever heard. In these kinds of issues, I will never say never, but it would be astonishing if they succeed. Uh, one expert, when there was a breakthrough six months ago when scientists achieved a net energy gain from a fusion reaction for the first time, one expert said, this is one of the biggest results of science in the past 20 to 30 years. Uh, it's been called, nuclear fusion has been called the holy grail of clean energy. It creates four times more power than nuclear fission. There's no greenhouse gas emissions. There's no nuclear waste. Um, it all sounds almost a little too good to be true. Are you excited about nuclear fusion? And is it something that you would want to invest in yourself? Um, I think it's incredible. And I'm super excited about it. And the idea of recreating the sun such that you can create non-carbon based energy source. I mean, what's not to like? I think it's wonderful. Mm -hmm. I would absolutely invest if it was I wanted to invest in um, Bill Gates' uh, uh, nuclear power company. I'm trying to figure out ways to be part of the solution with my capital in addition to mm -hmm. buy a much bigger plane. Because when daddy owns a Gulfstream, he goes from being interesting and quirky to fucking fascinating. <laughs> you Ed, had one, right? I did have one. <laughs> you got rid of it. I sold it. Yeah, I sold <laughs> it. But that doesn't mean I can't buy another one after my huge windfall for my in. For my investment in fusion or whatever gets daddy the Gulf Stream, I don't care. <laughs> I or you, I just want to recreate the sun such that I can um I can load up load up um load up the plane with people headed to Costa Rica. Anyways, I don't know how we got here. Yeah, I would invest. <laughs> I think it's very exciting. I think it's it's incredibly cool. I imagine it's gonna go into a hype cycle, but the, in terms of in terms of its impact on the world, it's hard to imagine a technology you would want more to win. If you mm -hmm. look at the people sitting on top of fossil fuels, they generally aren't very good people. Other than Nor the Norwegians, those are really nice people. The, <laughs> the Norwegians are really nice. Uh, and some of the people in Texas aren't that bad. I was just in Austin, Ed. It was nice. Uh, mm. But yeah, I think, it's, uh, I think it's super exciting. I wouldn't be surprised, though, if whoever's in charge of nuclear fusion pulls an AI move and in a year mm -hmm. says, I'm worried about fusion's impact on the future and I want to pause. <laughs> I'm just so sick of hearing about these people who like develop these technologies and get really concerned about the time they stopped cashing in their options. <laughs> Anyways. 